A wise sage once said, the greatest education is watching the masters at work. A quote which actually forms the basis of this entire masters series. He is also known to have very wisely said, don't blame it on the sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight, blame it on the boogie. Another quote that forms part of my astrological toolkit. This was a man built with space age design and his physical form emanated Aquarian starlight that electrified audiences everywhere. His artistic pursuits always seemed a bit Parivartana to me. Did he make the world's greatest music because he loved to dance? Or did he dance because he loved making the music? In today's Masters episode, we're having coffee with Michael Jackson. Life Coaching. Welcome to the Masters series. We are going to have coffee with Michael Jackson. Oh, I'm so excited. This is an episode that I've been wanting to do for so, so long. And I'm really glad to be able to share my thoughts on his chart with you. Now, before I begin, I've got my notes written up on my Kindle. I've got my little mushroom tea here, so I'm all equipped. I wonder what MJ might be having. Something tells me he might be having a Pepsi. I don't know. But before I get stuck into my notes, I just want to say that this Masters episode comes after Oprah did her documentary on Michael Jackson, and she interviewed two men I believe who made their documentary about what they believe happened. Um, I, I just want to address that because I remember at the time I looked into the astrology of MJ. I also looked into the astrology of um, one of the young men who claimed that MJ was a weirdo and this and that. Uh, I looked into a lot of astrological things and whatever I could find and I came to my own conclusion that MJ is 100% pure and I believed that the young men were lying. Uh, that's what I came to. Anyway, I was on the phone with a dear friend of mine who is a gifted healer, intuitive, uh, energy magician. Like I, I, I don't even know, I don't even have words for this dear friend of mine who I've known for so, so long. And we got to talking about MJ and she said that he's absolutely the purest soul. And I, I knew it myself. My intuition kept telling me, no, he is completely 100% legit, great man, doesn't do any of that weird stuff. I knew that, right? But like my intuition was saying that, but I had it confirmed from someone whose intuition is amazing. So for me, it's like he, he's not. Uh, what people were painting him out to be. Astrologically, I mean, you could look at that Rahu in the 8th house and make a very cheap and quick decision that, you know, this and that. But no, he's not. <laughs> and it's my intuition that is where I'm getting the info from. And I've had it confirmed not only from this dear friend of mine, but uh, other people through conversation and their opinions and what conclusions they've come to. I just keep coming to the same conclusion that he is totally amazing, 100% um, pure soul. And it's not because, you know, I I'm unable to um, differentiate, say for example, the art from the artist. That's something that Sister Wendy Beckett talks about. She says that you must be able to analyze art without letting any biographical detail of the artist influence how you feel and how you respond to the art. I can totally separate the two, no problem. Uh, but I, yeah, you know, and, and my intuition is, is building constantly through the work that I'm doing with astrology now. So um, it's always good to have it confirmed. But anyway, let's get into my notes. Uh, I just wanted to clear that up right from the beginning. And we're going to go through my notes so that way I don't go down any tangents. 
because you know me, I like to go down some tangents. All right, let's take a look, shall we? So let's take a look at his natal chart. Michael Jackson's nakshatras alone indicate many highlights of this man's life story. So first up, we've got Ascendant in Sattvishak, the healer of the collective consciousness. It's no wonder MJ wrote the song, Heal the World, as a large part of his life was devoted to doing exactly that. Saturn in Jeshtha in the 10th house, a mark of eminence, brought massive envy from the world at large. And it can also indicate a work ethic that others will find hard to keep up with. This Saturn and Mars is also connected. That could also be, um, you know, why people were uh, constantly trying to have a go at him. But I haven't studied into that. That might be another video. Um, the stars in Chitra, Rahu and Jupiter. Chitra is ruled by the celestial architect of the universe. And Michael Jackson was definitely an architect. Alongside being a singer, a dancer, an artist, a poet, a writer, a dreamer, a thinker, a genius. I mean, how, how many roles, how many different words can we put there? But architect should feature, right? Um, he quickly outgrew his childhood to create a kingdom which was designed to bring joy and happiness to everyone who spent time there. Everyone who spent time there, a working kingdom, as Virgo is here. You know, this kingdom served the people, especially young people who weren't well. Mars in Krithika Nakshatra is something I see in many top artists who know what to keep and what to cut out. It provides a tremendous ability to discriminate. Based in the third house, it gave him a fearlessness to express himself fully on the world stage, to not only dare to think he can do anything, but then to actually go out and do it. But where is the music coming from? Hmm, and where is the dancing coming from? Right, so I would say the music is coming from the combination of earth and air. And I believe the music comes first from his mind and is then expressed through his physical body. What I came to next is fascinating. When searching images of Michael Jackson, I kept finding those of his face and his feet. Look at the second house, Ketu. The sign of wanting to achieve perfection is in the second house, face, governed by Pisces, feet, right? I mean, that's not some celestial poetry right there. I don't know what is. So this man wanted to achieve perfection in his physical form, both through what it looked like, the face, and how he moved, especially through his feet, Pisces. 29 degrees Revati. It's 29 degrees 48 Revati. Wow, right? That's the whole zodiac. He's, he's done it, right? Look at the number of incarnations it must have taken to come to this height of genius. Amazing. But let's go back to the king thing. Yes, we see Marga Nakshatra, Sun, Mercury, plus Sun in his own house too. It's, it's right here in the birth chart. But I also believe his father played a significant role in getting his son to the top. When you look at Michael's D12 chart, you can see there would be major tension in the relationship with his father, Lord of D1, 10th house, seated in the 8th house. But interestingly, because the ascendant Lord of his D12 chart is placed in the 7th house of his birth chart, this is what's really granting him that kingship status. There was a lot of karma to clean up with his dad, but interestingly, it was his dad who helped him reach those heights. A weird kind of Nietzsche Bunga situation being played out between two people. So that is my overview of Michael Jackson. I hope you enjoyed that. Of course, there is so much more to say, so many charts to study. You know, in Vedic astrology, we study up to 16 charts. So yeah, it's a huge, massive case study. I just gave you a little taster, but I hope you enjoyed that. Please do uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Even
Jesus.